Hello everyone, welcome to 3 Minutes Engineering Concepts. The idea of this channel is to explain any fundamental or advanced engineering concepts in mechanical and material sciences in 3 minutes time. If you would like us to explain any new concepts then please comment below and we will come back with a video on that. In meanwhile you can also like, share and subscribe our channel so to get regular updates on it and also you please share our channel with other colleagues or students who would like to get some idea on to this. In today's video, I'm going to speak about the galvanic corrosion or galvanic cell construction in this short time. If your structure is exposed to any type of environment, you can have many different mechanisms of corrosion such as oxygen-based corrosion, carbon dioxide-based corrosion, which is known as sweet corrosion, and hydrogen sulfide-based corrosion, which is called sour corrosion. So depending on the mechanism, you can have many different ways of defining it. Today I'm going to keep it to a very generalized and a layman language what is a galvanic corrosion and if you understand this you will understand most of the other mechanisms of corrosion. So galvanic corrosion is basically results when you have a oxidation potential differences in metallic materials and if you have two materials which are in a solution and they have different oxidation potentials then you can reach to a point where your electrons start to flow from more active materials to a less active material and this will mean your more active material will start to dissociate due to the loss of electrons becoming an ions in the solution while the other materials start to get the those electrons and becomes more like uh, from ion to atomic material so let's look at the typical construction of a galvanic cell so this is a, a basic construction of a galvanic cell what you see in this case is you basically have You basically have an electrode which is made up of zinc this is the zinc, zinc electrode or zinc bar i call it and this one is the copper bar so generally when you look at their oxidation potential you will find out zinc is more active than copper so zinc is more prone to losing electrons as compared to copper now zinc is in the zinc sulfate solution so when, I, when zinc sulfate is in the solution this means we have zinc positive two ions and and also we have sulfate positive negative two ions or radicals in this solution while on the other side i have copper bar in a copper sulfate solution i have the same analogy copper ions and sulfate ion in the solution itself i connect these two metallic bars with a conductor with a voltmeter so when electrons start to flow from a more active to a less active material i will see some potential difference in addition to that I have a salt bridge which is sodium chloride salt bridge in this case so when there's an imbalance of ions the salt bridge will, <coughs> will provide uh, ions or electrons to these solutions to keep the whole thing in equilibrium so as soon as the, re the reaction starts in such a way that your zinc starts to lose electron from here and it gets uh, that was the zinc positive ion and dissolves in the, in the solution itself these electrons travel along this line and goes are taken up by copper which then takes on the copper positive ions from the solution and they are deposited as copper atoms on the electrode bar due to the imbalance since this is losing positive electrodes electrons and this is using this is having more positive ions so you you have less so this requires more negative ions so you get this this deficiency of positive and negative ions from these solid bridges and this way you see that after a certain amount of time your zinc will be completely dissociated or corroded and that's a typical galvanic cell for any material. For the next videos, I will come back with the explanation on how this galvanic corrosion occurs when you have an oxygen based corrosion. Well, let's say if you have a pipeline in a subsea environment, like in this case, or if your pipeline is transferring some, some chemical or fluids which have carbon dioxide in, into it, then how does it corrode in that case? Or for example, if you have hydrogen sulfide in, this, in the products, then how it's going to corrode? So I'm going to explain those in future time. But if you want any other aspects of corrosion which you want me to explain then please write in the comments and i'll come back with a video thank you very much for watching